Hi guys, welcome back to the show. And uh, this week, filling in for Manny on the show is uh, Art Cherries himself. Thanks, Art, for making it back in because we can never trust Manny to be here on time. If you do count how many times he's not been in here, comment. Let him know you're noticing that he's not here. Run out of hands. Run out of fingers. Run out of hands. All right, so here's the goods. This week's box office, uh, number one, Wonder Woman steals it again. Uh, this week pulling in $57.1 million. Wow. Actually had only a 44% drop, and normally when films come out, they normally suffer like a 50 to 60% drop each week. This one only had a 44% drop, uh, beating out The Mummy in number two. Um, I mean, have you got a chance to see Wonder Woman? I, I, I saw The Mummy. I actually No, enjoyed. not Mummy. Have you seen Wonder Woman? Oh, I saw both. Okay, you saw both. I saw both. I'd seen Wonder Woman three, four times. Oh. <laughs> so you're the reason why this one was able to still make money. In well, I only saw it once. My wife won't let me see it again. But, well, that says something about your love for Wonder Woman now, doesn't it? Well, it just says I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> now, because Wonder Woman actually took number one again, uh, like I said, it brought in $57.1 million. Uh, last week, it brought in $103 million in that actually brings wow. its total uh, with inter international like to 205 million dollars so far it only had a 125 million dollar budget two weeks it's already doubled that 125 so, million dollar budget sorry 149 million dollar budget well, well yeah I read, yeah, the, wrong, yeah, I read yeah. the wrong number there let me point that out 149 million well, still budget. 149 let's just say 150 150 right so in the first two weeks already made that already. back i mean you have to count in stuff like uh, marketing and advertising stuff like still, that but so you know you added another 50 million dollars for that 200 million dollars they still already cleared that yeah, in the first yeah, two weeks but you yeah i mean it was such it's an amazing movie i okay. really enjoyed it one of the i took my daughter to see it because i wanted her to feel some pride oh did you yeah you know she can't feel pride from that you know you can't make her feel stronger as you a know woman. what i cannot make her feel stronger as a woman <laughs> That's why I, I rely on movies and TV to help me <laughs> raise my daughter. <laughs> just like everybody in America, we let we let we let TV yeah, actually just in raise cable our guy? culture. <laughs> what? <laughs> so anyway, the movie that it actually uh, beat in uh, second place is actually The Mummy. Now, The Mummy actually brought in thirty-two point two million dollars, which is actually a low amount for a movie that's actually starring Tom Cruise. Normally, when we get a Tom Cruise-led film, we're normally looking for somewhere around fifty million dollars to open it. So it's a big disappointment for at least the studio with thirty-two million dollars. Do you think this is a uh, is a flop so far for Tom Cruise? I don't think so much. It's a flop. I mean, it's hard to compete against Wonder Woman when it appeals to all different ages. The Mummy does have some few scenes that are perhaps not age appropriate if you want to take your young daughter or young child to go see this movie. I took mine. And to yeah, go see there, The Mummy? There were some awkward moments. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's like, almost as bad when I took my daughter to see 300. You took your daughter to see Rise of an <laughs> Empire, yeah. Yeah, won't make that mistake again. And that's why you took your kid to go see Wonder Woman this time. Yeah, make up. She's still scarred from the previous time. <laughs> All right, so that's one of the things that actually um, that's affecting this film is that the um, the reviews on this film have been really, really low, uh, both by the fans and both by the movie critics. Right now on Rotten Tomatoes, it's got like a 17% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. That's worse than Suicide that's, Squad. That's, that is that's true, worse man. than BBS. This whole movie is is just not looked at as a really good movie. I mean, it's, it's coming off really bad. And uh, I enjoyed it. Really? <laughs> yes, I enjoyed it. I thought I was not going to. I went in there with low, low expectations. Low expectations. Um, and oddly enough, I really did enjoy this movie. I mean, when you're expecting crap, you know, if you get, you know, a flower on the crap, uh, then it's yes, better to you know, go. Mostly on the crap of plate. There you, you know, go. Right? It was a nice that piece of crap they served me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it elevates you. All right. So, I mean, one of the things ab about Mummy uh, is that it's starting their dark universe. And we'll talk a little bit more on that. But just to have a movie that's starting a franchise not do so well, uh, it doesn't say it doesn't say much as far as what they're going to be giving us going forward. Forward. Well, I think one. I mean, I'm oddly enough, I'm defending Tom Cruise's movie, <laughs> uh, which I would never do. Uh, but no, left out come. Top well, that's probably one of the only three that I like. Uh -huh. Days of Thunder, no cold trickle. Well, Days of Thunder is number two. Interview of Vampire. No, I go on for days with Tom Cruise movies. <laughs> well, yeah, he's got a lot. <laughs> uh, no, uh, 
Now I lost my train of thought. Don't worry, because we're going to talk about right. Mummy and Tom Cruise in a little bit. Number three, actually, was uh, Captain Underpants with uh, $12.3 million, uh, which is a movie you probably should have took your daughter to go see because that is actually a family film. She does not want to see that. <laughs> she's 13. She's at that middle age where you don't uh, want to see that. She's, she's at that middle age where you can show her 300 Rise of the <laughs> I showed her when she was 11. <laughs> You were a bad parent, sir. <laughs> Number four was Pirates of the Caribbean. Dead Man Tell No Tales. They're still somehow bringing in money because that wasn't really, no, well, for me, it wasn't a great film. For Pirates of the Caribbean's fan, it was a great film. And for you, you thought it was. I have yet to see it. I, that tells you what I think about That is why that they franchise. didn't get 10 million points, yeah. seven, ten dollars that's why they didn't get the extra ten dollars from you. All right, and uh, rounding out number five is uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Still, uh, still, still in the number five. Wow, still in the top five. Marvel knows how to make good films and knows how to keep those things making money. I didn't enjoy it the most, but hey, people are still giving six million dollars to it every week. I gave it three out of five jalapenos. So that's about it. What broke my heart is Baywatch actually fell out of the top five. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had this conversation about Baywatch. Baywatch is now number six, so that, that one fell out of the top five. Out. Really hurt my feelings. That's all right, Rock. I'm still on your side. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, we were talking about the movies in the top five, and one of the movies we were talking about was the, uh, the new Mummy film with Tom Cruise. And uh, because of its critically, or it's not critically acclaimed, the low, low reviews it's gotten so far as with the fans and the movie critics, um, Universal has actually announced that they're still going to proceed forward with their dark universe. Even though this film came in with low money, even though people didn't really like it, do you think it's a good idea? I think it's a great idea. All right. You, so. Uh, so it creates a different new franchise, something new to build off of. Those, I mean, it really didn't have that many people view it, right? <laughs> Obviously not. Obviously not. not. <laughs> Obviously it's, not. <laughs> <laughs> the numbers should have got those should have Wonder Woman in this film. Maybe yeah. to gain some money. It, I mean, <laughs> what it was competed against. If you ruled out Wonder Woman, it would have beaten everything. It yeah. would have beaten Captain America. Exactly. Pants. It's is that a win? Yeah. Is that a win? <laughs> you have to think about it. Yeah. I mean, when you're you know the Milwaukee Bucks going against you know Golden State, if you can get one. <laughs> quarter where you outscored them. I guess that's better. There you go. It was yeah. like you got one quarter. There, there you go, mommy. You beat Captain Underpants. That's the one quarter you led the game. So, I mean, with all this stuff that it's set up, and we're trying not to spoil the movie if you haven't seen it by this point, the things that it's seeded in the mummy, uh, do you still want to see that kind of spreading out? Because it's seeded some things in this film. Oh, yeah. No, no. I mean, this. <laughs> if you have not seen the film, there's a lot of, I won't even call them Easter eggs. They're okay. just. No, they were like straight out. Like, this is what up, we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's just so much that they can build off of it and they don't have to have one particular character or uh, actor carry that franchise they just have one connecting i i almost say it was more league of extraordinary gentlemen yes. that's not really yes. a spoiler, but kind so. of like building off of that okay so it's a good it's a good idea even though that this one didn't do well to just go ahead and proceed yes, i mean we still got a film coming out with the invisible man with johnny depp you still ready to see that film i'm so you know what <laughs> Another Johnny Depp movie where he's wearing makeup. Maybe we're gonna see Luke Evans back as Dracula. You ready to see that film? Bring it on! I've been. You are this movie. Sir. This yes. This movie <laughs> left me. This movie left me like when I first saw Stargate. Okay. When I first saw Stargate, when it ended, oh, I mean, I wanted more. I want to know what else is gonna happen. Okay. This movie, as it ended, I'm like, okay, cool. I wonder what else is gonna happen. Like, I wonder what okay. they left it with a great ending. This film Let's left see. it with a great ending. I thought so. I thought so. Hey, we, it's opinion. We beg to differ on this. <laughs> you know, I'm part of the, what is it, 14%? The 17%. The 17%. <laughs> the 17 that Out of how many viewers? 17% <laughs> that loved this movie. The other 83% were meh. Meh. Meh at meh. best. <laughs> All right. Well, actually, moving to studios that know how to do good sequels. Uh, <laughs> Chris Evans was recently interviewed and he confirmed that he actually will be signing on to do Avengers 4. Now his original uh, his original picture deal that he had with Marvel was only for six pictures in Avengers 3 or if he skipped that one or Avengers 4, the next Avengers film was probably going to be his last film. But because they broke it up in two parts, he decided he was going to go ahead and sign on to make sure he was there for both parts of the Avengers. Are you happy to hear that I'm Chris happy Evans to hear that. He's the on? heart. He's the heart of uh Marvel, really, though their their films, he really it captivates who we want to be, right? We, the epitome of just all around, just a good guy, just good natured, want to be. Uh, as much as you know, Tony Stark carries the films. Uh, 
Captain America, you know, Steve Rogers really is the heart of what builds the uh, people. Very true. The movie. Until they move him to Hydra, like they did in the comic books. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the uh, one thing I was wondering too is uh, when when. Um, I wouldn't say Tony Stark. <laughs> We're, screw it, Tony Stark. Robert, Robert Downey. When Tony Stark, got, when Tony Stark's contract ran out, uh, Robert Downey Jr. actually got to ask for whatever he wants because he knew the power that he had within Marvel. I'm hoping because he didn't disclose what that contract's looking like to be added on for the additional film. I hope he's getting Robert Downey Jr. money where he's getting fifty million dollars a, a film. So that actually may not get to see him in an Avengers what, Five. What blows or, my mind is these actors. I mean, Robert Downey has. Been acting for so long, right? What, yeah, it's old. forty years, thirty years. However old he is, he's old. He's old, <laughs> but doesn't look it. In way better shape than me. There you go. Um, but what do you do with all this money? I mean, fifty dollars, fifty million dollars. You buy islands and you ha and you have sex with hot women. That's what you do with yeah, this with well, this money. You can exactly. also do, you can also have hot sex with women when you're broke. You can't. But, I have but you, don't, you don't get to do it on a private island. That? You don't get to do it on a private island. And he ain't good looking or have money. <laughs> Can I just to myself? <laughs> Certainly, sir. <laughs> if you guys are from the back, we have, we have a guy on the couch. Unfortunately, we didn't get the video set up in time. But uh, sure, defend yourself, sir. Go to hell. There you go. That's yeah. the defense that we want to hear on this show. He said Robert Downey <laughs> go to hell. No, no, he's a good guy. All right, so uh, we got a little bit of trailer talk this week. All right. All right. Uh, recently dropping, we the trailer that we had all been waiting for, especially since it had been seeded in the Marvel Universe, transitioning, because that's what I do. Uh, Black Panther actually dropped its first teaser trailer during the, uh, the NBA playoffs. Did you get a chance to see it, Art? Yes, I did. What'd you think? I liked it. I mean, yeah, it's, okay. one of, it's one of those things that you're already expecting it. You've, you've already seen the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, you're excited about it. It's just adding a little, wow. Don't forget, guys, here it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to see it, obviously. I'm going to see it. Okay, well, I mean, I'm black, so I have to say that I want to see it. You know, I was waiting for when I watched the when I was watching the trailer. I was waiting for the produced by BET Studio. <laughs> <laughs> by BET. They didn't yes. broadcast it on BET. You know, they should have. I was in shock. There were so many black people in a movie about Black Panther. <laughs> That there I was, was totally shocked that there were so many black people. I expected them to, you know, somehow throw some extra white people. Look, in you, the Spawn you thought they were going to whitewash it. Yeah, in the Spawn movie, we got white Terry when Terry is actually black in the comic book. So I expect they were going to be throwing a bunch of white people in this movie that's in Africa and dealing with Black Panther and tribes and stuff like that. And I was like, there's just, it's all black people. I, I'm, I'm shocked. And, but, you know, I really enjoyed the trailer. So you thought they were going to last airbender it, huh? <laughs> I, I, I don't know what I was expecting, but I was I was pleasantly shocked. I'll say it that way. I was pleasantly shocked. Tom Hanks as Shaka Zulu. Tom Hanks as Shaka Zulu. So, question. An honest, legitimate question here. What, weren't you excited when the Falcon... Yeah, I was like, you know, we got to see a black superhero. You know, last one we had was Blade before Wesley Snipes decided to cheat the America and his taxes and <laughs> <laughs> go crazy, go to jail. And so, you know, we have we have a cool black superhero, cool little black superhero. We have a cool black superhero, and to see now a black pamper, pamper, panther, uh, we I have another. Seen many one. black pampers. We well, that's another topic for another day. But uh, <laughs> it's cool to, to see how diversified Marvel has actually gotten in their universe. Yes, we're getting to see more ethnicities out there and actually superheroes of color. So I was really excited to see that. Like I said, I was a little thrown off. I was expecting a bunch of white people in the trailer. I, you know what? I'm, I'm going to be honest. I was a little excited as well when uh, I was watching Agent, uh, Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh my God, I thought you were going to say Roots. Yeah. Go ahead. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, totally threw me off now. <laughs> Ghost Rider, That's Robbie funny. Reyes. Yeah. And they had, you know, Mexican American on there, and I was uh -huh. super stoked. There you go. I was actually, ex you know, really excited. I'm like, wow, we got, where to go? We got at least one in there. I I'm just waiting for uh, Dia de los Muertos, where they actually put the Ghost Rider on the shirt. <laughs> I'm wearing my <laughs> El Santo shirt. So, I mean, this it's it's a good day. It's a good day for ethnicities, and I can't wait to see this movie. The only bad parts I took with the trailer, because it was a teaser trailer, some of the CGI looked a little wonky with it, so that was my only bad spot with it. And I'm not a big Black Panther fan, so I didn't know a lot of characters that they were referencing, so now I gotta do my, you know, uh, my I nerd give, homework. I give CGI <laughs> a lot of leniency. Okay. I mean, if you watch a movie from the 80s, and 
their special effects were horrible. Why do we expect, you know, oh, it has to be perfect now? You know, because we're sports. It's your imagination. Well, it, it's not. really, I mean, yeah, we are. <laughs> you are. I'm not. I enjoy movies ah. for what they are. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> you like the mummy. <laughs> 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 all right. Other trailers that have dropped. Um, one of the trailers, because uh, all during um, maybe Halloween in the year, maybe early of this year, we actually had a bunch of clown sightings, a little creepy sound. Yeah, sightings. yeah. Clowns standing out in the forest. Clowns like bringing in kids, you know, like waving them in, like, hey, I got some candy, I got puppies, and carrying machetes. Well, they were, they was all on social media, yeah, going, you know, like, these clowns are going to show up and shoot up, shoot up a building. You know, threatening school. schools and stuff like that, and it was, it was, a, it was, it was kind of like this big thing that was going on. Well, just like Hollywood to take advantage of something, <laughs> <laughs> they actually dropped a trailer called Behind the Sightings. It's kind of a documentary, found footage style film, where in the vein of, like, the early Blair Witch film. Yeah. Uh, or even the Blair Witch reboot. <laughs> or Cloverfield. It's uh, it's going to use found footage, but it also has like uh, an actual uh, clown villain and uh, in the in the trailer. So uh, I wanted to see how you felt about them actually doing this film as found footage, but also too seeing a film that actually has a, a horror film that actually has a clown as as the yeah. killer. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, I hate found footage films. You hate found footage films? I hate found footage films. Really? Yes, yes. I'm not paying for... But they're so cheap to make, sir. Yeah, yeah, they are. <laughs> they are. But I don't care. I'm not paying. I'm still paying the same price that I would pay for a found footage film mm -hmm. as the one that spend, they spent $150, $200 million to So you make. say you want a discount. I <laughs> all right, so they Have gave off. you a discount, you go yeah, watch the film. Then I won't go in. You know. No, found footage films... I understand. Uh, there's only a couple of found footage films that I really like, or and I won't even say. Did I just name them films. too? Did I just name those two? Blair Witch and Cloverfield. Yeah. No, Cloverfield <laughs> hated Cloverfield. Oh man. I, I, you know, it's we just like, again. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I'm the unpopular geek opinion. I know. That's what it is. All right. Uh, so found footage and creepy clowns, not your deal. No. Second of all, I you know why even talk about something that was creating hysteria? And I mean. That's the word I was looking for, hysteria. Whether or not, you know, some people may felt that as if parents were overreacting. The fact is, when they're posting on social media that there's going to be a shooting, this, that, and the other, mm -hmm. the way things are going, why even mix the pot even further? Uh, I mean, have you not watched Hollywood? <laughs> I understand. They do this all the time. They do it regularly, regularly. <laughs> but it, I just... That for me, I guess, uh, as being a father, touched the uh, you know my daughter could be at an, any school. What if they were just going to remake you know Killer Clowns from Outer Space? Would uh, you be okay different. with that? Because yeah, it's you know, <laughs> first of all, I love the movie. <laughs> so the, that one would have been cool. If that one been cool. Clowns. They're not taking advantage of you know the. Um, I mean, they would still be this wave doing it. Of, of fear that was sweeping over the nation. They would still be kind of doing it. So even if they, <laughs> they would still be kind of doing it, it was like hey, this clowns. clowns are terrifying right now. Killer Clowns from Outer Space reboot. They would still be taking advantage of it. So because it's Killer Clowns from Outer Space, not the, what was the name of it? Uh, behind the Sightings. Behind the Sightings. All right. That's that's working over the crowd over or something. Okay. Or I mean, it's, it's like right there kind of nudging them like, yeah, you saw those videos. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, okay. So I get that. But still, creepy, uh, Killer Clowns would still be trying to bring in money. All right. So our, our last trailer, Sticking with Horror, we actually got a, a teaser trailer that dropped in. The actual full trailer is going to drop on Wednesday. This video will probably post after Wednesday. So we're going to act like we saw the full trailer. So uh, it's By the time you see this video, the, the, full, the trailer, full trailer will actually will be out. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> This uh, trailer that uh, actually dropped was called Happy Death Day, and uh, it actually has a, uh, a, uh, a baby face killer. So we actually have a killer uh, wearing a baby face mask, so kind of like what we got with the uh, ghost face and scream, uh, stuff like that. It kind of returns us back to slashers. We haven't had a good slasher film in quite some time. First of all, let me, let's not jump the gun. Have you seen this uh, trailer? No, I haven't. Okay, you didn't miss anything because it was about 20 seconds long and they barely showed you anything. They showed you a guy in a baby mask breaking a bong and, and stabbing some hot chick. I mean, that's basically every horror movie that I've probably seen. A guy in a mask stabbing some hot chick. This the, that's the setup for every horror film. Yes, pretty so much. we didn't get anything new out of it. Was she running upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't running upstairs. She was actually laying on a bed. So that's still in a horror movie trope. Yeah, true. Um, 
But so we didn't really get, I, we didn't really get anything out of this particular teaser trailer. Hopefully, when the full trailer comes out, we will get a little bit more, a little bit more of the story, what's going on. It was just like kill her, then it was a cake, and it says happy death day. I'm hoping that this actually will be something that's worthwhile. But it m makes me think about slashers in general. And uh, me and you had a conversation along with Manny, who's not here with us today. Um, <laughs> in regards to slasher films and uh, one of the questions that I wanted to post to you right now uh, with this movie bringing us an actual slasher uh, like Ghostface like Jason like Michael Myers uh, I guess Nightmare on Elm Street you can consider Freddy a slasher because I actually looked up the definition of slasher and it says uh, a villain who kills a psychopathic killer who kills people with bladed weapons yes and that kind Freddy of, would be Freddy would be a slasher yes so with this movie coming out and seeing they have so much buzz on YouTube and the internet right now would this be a film that's kind of would would be would be the resurgence of the slasher film genre Subgenre. 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 We, sub -genre. Had, we had this conversation. <laughs> we didn't have this conversation about this movie, just about the genre in general. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say this subgenre has never ended. It's Eat. just, it's just been. There's been a couple of movies here and there. Okay. Uh, Scream. Scream was one of them. Yeah. It, like, uh, a yeah. film called Hatchet. Uh, Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods. Kind of. Eh, Yes and no, but House of Wax. House of Wax is another one. So we've actually been getting just not very films. good ones. We've just not been getting just not very good ones. <laughs> House of Wax was not memorable. Yeah. House of Wax was was <laughs> not memorable at all. Okay. All right. I mean, you know, Paris Hilton. Oh, Paris Hilton. I mean, she got me yeah. to see that. She got me to see that. Movie. She got, me to see, she she got people garbage. to vote too when she didn't vote either. <laughs> so. All right, so, uh, you know, I know you said that it, it's never ended, but a lot of what horror has become is it's been more uh, paranormal. Yeah. It's been more of, yeah. like, gore films, like Saw and Hostile. Well, and, and the reason um, why I believe that mm -hmm. it's... Let me just break this off into two. Okay, go ahead. All right, so I think the golden age of slasher films were the 80s. Okay. Right, because, let's just be honest... Uh, the uh, graphics or the uh, special effects weren't there. Yeah, right? they did blood squibs. That's all yeah, you needed. Yeah, but <laughs> so you couldn't do a lot of the. You know, we went through all these transitions of different horror films. You know, uh, the psychological thrillers, this, that, or the other. So the '80s was for me the golden era, uh, golden age of slasher. Films. I mean, that's all of the iconic, you know, yes, slashers all yes. were in that in that '80s. I would 90s, always say that the, it's because. They had they had more the, the the slate was so clean that you could give out more yes. ideas. Yes, and um, which it was uh, newfound territory. So the golden age of slasher films were in the eighties. Okay, okay, nineties kept us with uh, what is it? Uh, I know what you did last summer. Yeah, and did. also Scream. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then there was like a little lull mm -hmm. that we had. We had a House of Wax and maybe a couple of others here or there. Uh, uh, they, but they remade a lot of the old ones. Yes, so yes. when we got Slashers again, we just got remakes of stuff that was from the 80s so, to begin So that's with. why I believe, you know, moving on to that, that's why I believe it never died. Even though that, even though now we're getting a new Slasher character. We, and we have an entirely new audience, right? You yeah. and I. The Millennials. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're not, they didn't watch these films in the 80s nor the 90s. No. So they, this were, is, they weren't alive. So this so. is new for them as well. Okay. Right. So, uh, so, so this for them is newfound territory and now with new I mean think about how what you can do I, I know I mentioned earlier that I'm not a fan of found footage films <laughs> but found think, footage is technically one of those genres yeah. <laughs> but, but think about how exciting it is what kind of movies you can film now with your phone what can be used as your phone as, a, as mm -hmm. the reason I didn't like found footage films is because of the, how jerky the camera movement well, was that's why it had to make it seem like it was found footage yeah I know I understand <laughs> that's why I'm not a fan but, got your camera but you can do I mean paranormal activity for me mm -hmm. Was a film that, or a franchise that really captivated, was able to do that. A steady camera, mm -hmm. and they used the movement of the camera to their advantage. Very true. Uh, so, with the new slasher films, all this, this is for the millennials, this is a new, new territory, new ground that they can do and see it from a different perspective. Not us, right. that we've already been accustomed to a certain kind of. That's the way it's supposed to be, you know, point A, point B, point C. Yeah, she's going up the stairs. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe what, what if she runs downstairs to the basement? We don't know. <laughs> so would you it's be, never been done. <laughs> so would you be excited to to see, like, to give it a breath of fresh air? So since we've been getting bad ones, would you be excited? Oh, 
I, I, yes, okay. I welcome that. I welcome okay. that. And I welcome all creativity. I mean, okay. not everything's going to stick, but what? throw it out there. See what happens. Okay. I got you. All right. So uh, earlier, uh, early in the show, we talked about box office and uh, we were talking about Wonder Woman and how it's well is doing in the second week. And, you know, the low transition from week to week, people were out there wanting to see this woman led action film. So it got us thinking, uh, what are the top five women led action films in, you know, throughout time or. I, know, I'm, I not, won't say throughout time. We're not, we're not going back to history when hieroglyphics. Way back about, when, like, you know. <laughs> but as of late, and within our generation and the millennials' generation, what are the top five women-led action films? So now, here's our top five. And we're back. No flash and no substance. Man, that was really loud. Oh, I was I was trying for something edgy this time. You, you, you want to try to? No, we're gonna keep going. All right, all right, we're gonna keep it. We're gonna keep it. And today's top five, we're gonna do the top five women-led action films. All right, so this is a really cool genre as far as uh, one, we love action. Two, we love women, and to see them together like a peanut, like a Reese's peanut butter cup. <laughs> Just mesh together. It's it's a yes, perfect yes. it's a perfect thing. So, cherries. All Go right. First, <laughs> I want to go. F well, first, I want to recognize Wonder Woman. Okay. This is yes. what's this is the the reason why we're having this conversation. Yeah, exactly. That's yes. a you know Wonder Woman gave us the idea for this, and Wonder Woman is one of the newest and probably one of the best top. I five, would I mean, one of the agree. best women led action films, but. Does she make our top five list? Well, I don't want to include her in the top five mm -hmm. because it's so fresh and so new, and she's what kicked us off. Okay, true. right. So All right, we'll, we'll we'll put that out there. No okay. Wonder Woman on the top. No five. Wonder, and not because she doesn't she doesn't deserve it. Before. Sounds like you hate Wonder Woman, sir. No, no, I love Wonder Woman. <laughs> I love you. Number five. Number five. <laughs> Lucy. Lucy. All right, that's a good one. That's a good uh, one. Yeah, I mean, I, hey, I really Scar enjoy Joe, it. man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Scar Joe. Hello. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, we all went in. Scarlett Johansson's riding a wave. You right. know, she's just in so many different films, and she's showing that she can carry action films on her own, not except, just. Except for Ghost in the Shell. Except for what? <laughs> except for Ghost in the Shell. Ghost in the Shell, I have yet to see it. But it was one of those, you know what? Every, every, every major star out there has done a couple of films where it just wasn't a hit. Right. But they still put them, the, they tried it. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm there's not Black Widow film. <laughs> I would love a Black Widow film. Uh, so. But Lucy would like for sci-fi and for action, it gave you all of that. And uh, it was all her, the whole film. We didn't get, I mean, there was people she beat up and killed, but there was really nobody else in this film but Scarlett Johansson. So that, I, I love it just like you do. Uh, so then another movie we were talking about earlier. This is number four? This is number four. Number four! Number four! <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. This is another movie we were talking about. Terminator. The Terminator. original. We had a discussion about this. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And yes, uh, our buddy Zeke was the one that was mentioning this. And so I really do feel as if she was the star. She was the star. She though. really carried the movie. I can't remember the guy from Terminator. What was his name? Nobody can. Well, he was Schwarzenegger. No, I mean, not him. Not him. The other no, guy. No, the guy from... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's, no, not him. The we guy. have a buddy in the background. Yeah, right. exactly. No, the guy from uh, Aliens. Yeah, nobody remembers him. Thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> you have like, to Google it, just FYI. No, but I mean, it wasn't really his film. It was. It no, was, it, it was, was. I was gonna well, say Linda Carter. <laughs> it was. It was, <laughs> it was her film. It was not his film. And uh, even though she was kind of a damsel. She was still the main focal point of the film. She was still what the film revol revolved around. I mean, even as a damsel, you got to see her her arc. Yes. As far as like, you know, I won't, I just don't know what's going on, so I'm gonna try to survive this. Yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. And and uh, that's a great movie. What do you got for number three? Number, number three. <laughs> number three. All right. So this one. Well, I don't know if I should include number three as uh, and. Number three and two together. Okay. But I was going to say Laura Croft. Okay. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider one and two. Okay. That's fine. We'll take it. We'll, we'll say the Tomb Raider franchise. Tomb, the Tomb Raider franchise. Okay. We'll do that. Uh, she really did exceptionally well in okay. this movie. Is it because that she uh, embodied the Laura Croft body? Or is it because no, she no. sold action really well? She sold action. Okay. That's really what it is. Uh, 
she really was somebody who they, you know, they, I know they cast her for numerous reasons, right? Two, but, two, two reasons. Two reasons. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, she really did exceptionally well mm -hmm. in these movies. It wasn't anything that, you know, you were going to go spend, you know, see it three, four, five times. Very but true. it was a movie that you were going to see. Okay. It was, so, uh, number, would that be number three or two? That was, that was number three. Okay, so number two. Number two. <laughs> number two is, I'm a little torn on this one. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to go with, but I don't know if this is action or not. I won't even say it's Did action. they kill some people? They killed somebody. Did they kill some people within the first 10 minutes? Because no. Because that is my... What? No, they didn't. This is borderline action then, sir. Yeah, that's right. Because the rule is somebody has to die within the first 10 seconds. I mean, first 10 minutes, somebody has to die. Okay. Well, let's just say this. I'm going to skip this, and I'm going to change it to my honorable mention. Okay. Okay, so All right, that's what, a rule. What's your number two then, sir? Uh, Mila Jovavavich. <laughs> and all... So remakes. Yeah. <laughs> in all the Resident Evil movies. Okay. All right. I hate the Resident Evil movies. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm not a big fan of it, but I mean, there's enough people out there who really love this franchise. People love this They franchise. love this franchise. So the, for me, man, she's up there. I mean, this is a woman who yeah. Really, you don't really remember her much from other movies, except for, you know, The Fifth, the uh, fifth the, Element. The Fifth Element. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. other than that, I mean, this is her, that's her deal. That's yeah. her, that, I mean, I mean, and it's consistently. Five movies later. Yeah. Uh, six movies Six? Later. I don't Sorry, even know. I can't later. even keep up. She's got two trilogies with this franchise. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. That and only one good film. That, that, <laughs> is, that speaks volumes for itself. <laughs> and only one good film. Oh, the first one, that was the yeah. only good one. I couldn't keep up, but they were churning them out. All right, what's your number one? Number one! All right, number one, Kill Bill. Kill Bill. Kill Bill. That is an excellent choice. Uh, that, is an that, excellent choice. that is the Kill Bill uh, because it's technically all one movie. It was just broken up. It's broken up because he made it too long. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, it, I find no flaws with Kill Bill. I no? Mean, no. It was just a great, two great films that really, and come on now. She was kicking butt all over the place. There you go. Wait, did she kill somebody within the first 10 minutes? Uh, yeah, uh, certainly, sir. <laughs> within, the first, within the first 10. Uh, the first, I think within the first minute, somebody died. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just a great movie. I mean, name me somebody who didn't see Kill Bill for an action film as it, as it is, and they didn't become fans. Exactly. So. Uh, I mean... Who would have ever thought that she could do action? I mean, she had a great stunt double. We'll give her that. <laughs> That's true. And that was a great top five list, sir. I, I appreciate it that we didn't have Holy Man on your list. Because uh, <laughs> Holy Man, I always still stand by that. You, but anyway, you, we're you, talking you, about you're women. Not, you're not, not about any of them. You're, you're not living Men. it down. That Holy Man pick that you had for comedies, that was horrible, sir. Uh, <laughs> If All you've right. seen it, comment and say how good it was. That, how bad that was. All right, so my top five. <laughs> We're going to go with my number five. And I flip-flop on what I wanted to put as number five because I'm a big fan of the 80s, so I didn't know where I wanted to go. But uh, I, I'm going to take out what I originally put for number five, and I'm going to change it to this. So we're going to go. My number five is going to be Underworld. Underworld. Oh. Such a good movie. Come on, Such sir. No. <laughs> Kate Beckinsale? Yes. Kate Beckinsale. That, the, the first one was... Kate Beckinsale. Kate, I mean, it brought back... It gave us real werewolves. Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> Someone in the crowd. It gave us real vampires. It. And Kate Beckinsale, even in her moody, pouty look, and black spandex and Oof. leather and stuff like that, Oof. guns and backflipping and doing her matrix stuff, which is... Kate Beckinsale. You believed it. And she's so petite. And you believed everything that she gave you on screen. And yes. it was like, I I yes. love that. I love her in the franchise, even though I didn't really care for evolutions. Oh. <laughs> but in the first one, she was absolutely amazing. Yes. All right. Number four. Number four. Red Sonia. Really? <laughs> wow. I love this movie so much because it was my quasi spinoff sequel to Conan. I love this movie yeah. so much. And I mean, like, we're going old school. I mean, yeah, it's like yeah, we went yeah, old school yeah. with that one. It's like she got her. We got Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of playing, but not really playing Conan, and her doing her Shira thing with red hair. This movie was so good. It had such a cult fan following that they were going to redo this film with. Uh, What's the redhead chick? I forget. Obviously, it wasn't that memorable. Oh, uh, they, they canceled it. There was, like, promotional art and, like, posters that came out, but they ended up canceling the film. I can't remember her name. I'll put it down below. Um... Uh, that they were going, that's how big of a fan following this film has, and uh, it's just so dated now. And if you watch it now, you're kind of like, ah, it's so 80s. But 
I loved it back then as a kid. I still love it now, and that's why it's my number four. Sorry, Kate Beckinsale, but it beat you out. Brigitte Nielsen. Thank you. Before she got all flavor of love. Flavor of flavor. <laughs> yes. Before she got all flavor of loved. <laughs> number three. Number three. I'm gonna go Lucy. I'm gonna go Lucy for everything we just said. When Art had Lucy on his list, uh, ScarJo, because I still call her ScarJo. Only one, <laughs> only one. The early 2000s are over and he's still with that. <laughs> I love her in this film. Uh, like you said, this is one of the things that told you that she could actually lead a franchise, that she could lead a movie. And um, it's one of the things that got us all talking about when we're gonna get a Black Widow film. But like the action element, the sci-fi element, even though towards the end it got a little weird as far as they were trying to what they were trying to say at the end of this film. But the rest of the movie, 90% of this movie, great. 10%, meh. But she did an excellent job. I watch her in anything that she does, even Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> number two! Number two! Kill Bill is my number two, sir. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> blasphemy, I say, blasphemy. Kill Bill is my number two, because you haven't heard my number one. Kill Bill is my number two. Kill Bill is an amazing movie. And you look at part one and part two as one movie. Yes, and I can't yes. wait to actually get to the sequel because they're waiting for the little girl to grow up. So that way they can do the sequel where she actually comes out to go get her. Just, uh, just wait. Just I know, just wait. It's like, we're, 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 the money we're gonna make. <laughs> she did such a great job in this film and I'm a big fan of martial arts films. So just to see a martial art film with her and to see the blood and violence yes, and gore yes. that they had in this, great. I wish they could have picked a different build than David Carradine, but. <laughs> I'm not a big David Carradine fan. Maybe it's my love for Bruce Lee and how you got screwed him out of, uh, <laughs> of, of uh, Kung Fu. Uh, but um, I, I did love the movie overall. Okay, so my number this one. This better be good. My this number better one. better be good. None. Aliens. Sigourney Weaver. How did you forget this, sir? <laughs> I would not put that. I would Aliens. Kill Bill. I would not put that. Are you kill kidding Bill. me? No, I'm not. Sigourney That's what I'm telling you. you. I just get away from her, you bitch. <laughs> Come on. Her as a as a kid. Her and I. You know. Look, maybe I'm ruled by emotions. But her coming out of the crowd sleep with the little wife beater on and, and the little, what, oh God. <laughs> and then she still, she was hot and she still killed aliens. She still killed it. She was with the, with the space marines and going out there and we had dude from Terminator, because I still can't remember his name. <laughs> he got hurt and she was the one who saved the day. Come on, man. Sigourney Weaver, aliens. Nice. All right. So you ready for honorable mentions? Honorable mentions. You go first in honorable mentions. All right, honorable mentions. First of all, I was going to say aliens. Mm -hmm. It's on the list. Oh, okay. All right, aliens. Honorable on your list. Yeah. Aliens. Okay. Uh, the reason why is <laughs> younger viewers probably haven't seen aliens or really. I'm sure somebody's revisited it since the Covenant came out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was going to actually say aliens and aliens versus predator. Who was the woman that led aliens? Uh, oh, there, was it Zoe Saldana? No, it was not Zoe Saldana. <laughs> no, it was. I know who, it, that it was a black chick that was in it. Yeah. Um, I forget her I name. I thought she would know this. I forget her name, and I was like, and I keep track of all black people in films. Um, <laughs> all five of them. <laughs> Denzel is a separate exception, and Denzel Morgan Freeman. And Morgan Freeman. Yeah, them, them two are separate. Then there's and other five. Michael B. Jordan. We got to count him too. <laughs> yeah, he's part of the five. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, I forgot that she was she she was the actual human element of that film. Besides the ones they were actually killing. Uh, who, do you have anything else for uh, honorable mentions? Uh, honorable mentions. This is the other one. And now this is not so much an action film, uh, but it was a film that really I think she did an amazing, amazing job. And I just want to throw this out there. Uh, Monster. Technically, she did kill somebody. Oh, was it in 10 minutes, sir? <laughs> <laughs> was it in the first 10 minutes? It so, doesn't count. So, <laughs> but Charlize Theron was, I mean, she put herself, and uh -huh. she really transformed her body. Very true. To do this. And that, for me, that, that deserves recognition. I it mean, this it is, does. For an actor to go through that, especially a female actor, uh, it's a, and I know it's a double standard, it's a double standard nonetheless, that male actors get a little bit more credit or ah, they put, put on weight, they, they, yeah. they do yeah. Yeah. and, and we, hold women, women, it. we hold women to oh they, we want them to be voluptuous mm -hmm. we want them to be this and they have that, to yeah. have that all the time they can't yes. do a movie and not look yes. like that so, and yeah, she definitely. really she transformed her body 
And for me, that, that speaks volumes of the type of character or the type of actor that she's willing to, you know, what she's willing to do for it. The first it time I, I looked at Charlize Theron and I was like, ew. <laughs> the only time in my life that I've ever said that. Like, that's still. That's still. <laughs> All right, my honorable mentions. We're gonna, we'll go down some memory lane here. Uh, Barb Wire. Barb. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Pam Anderson. Pam Anderson. She look as crappy as that movie was. She at least sold the action in oh, it. What? She did not sell anything except <laughs> yeah. a ticket for you to see her boobs. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you got nothing you know either. What? And I paid. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> How do you, I didn't even sneak into that one when I was 17 years old. I, I, multiple times I've seen that film. I've yet to see not it. Not all the way through. Like, no, I've seen it. The first, couple, the first couple of minutes is all I needed. <laughs> no. 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 All right. Um, Hunger Games. Yes. Yeah, Hunger Games. Yeah. It's like she let, she let she the let franchise. The <laughs> she let the franchise, but I don't think. I mean, there was action. She had a bow and arrow. She did yeah. stuff. And, so, and it's like that started her whole career, too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right. So uh, other ones I had, I, you know, I had um, I, we, we had a debate as far as it had to be led by an actual woman. So uh, and not co-starred, you know, one wanted was co-starred. Uh, Mad Max Fury Road was co-starred. Uh, but when you uh, look like uh, another one that I had. And uh, I'm not sure if you've seen this one, but I love this film just because uh, with uh, Gina Carano. Uh, Haywire. Okay. Nobody really saw that one, but yes. I, I saw it, and in the first 10 minutes, she beat the crap out of Channing Tatum. <laughs> I mean, like, dude, your masculinity just got taken by her. He he got his ass whooped, that film. And it was like, and she didn't have a lot of dialogue. It was like an early Stallone Schwarzenegger film where, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. don't say much, just be a physical presence. And she was an amazing physical presence on screen. And, like, they, I mean, she's a martial artist, so, like, all her moves came off really well. And it was like, nothing seemed like, oh, there's a stuntman. She did all her own stuff. So I really appreciate that film. I wish it would have transitioned to better things for her. All we really got out of it was, like, fast five and that was it <laughs> and i think she was uh she was a gladiator and that's all we really got out of it so uh gladiator uh on the new american gladiator she was one of the american oh, really? gladiators yeah i did not know that yeah she was one of the american Gina gladiators Carano. yeah there you go uh that's my honorable mentions we I, we talked about all there's this there's <laughs> one I, I did want to talk about mm -hmm. uh but it's not an action well what would you consider would you consider this one an action film well i probably wouldn't uh million dollar baby it's a boxing film, yeah. That's an action film. Yeah, but she didn't. Kill I mean, it's, it's it's dramatic, but I mean, yeah, I would count boxing right. as well, But it's not. Would you consider that one an action film? Oh, because she didn't kill anybody. Yeah, but she hurt somebody really but bad. But she hurt somebody. She hurt several <laughs> people really bad. But for, yeah, that's another movie that I thought, wow, like I wish. If it wasn't just limited to just action, just mm -hmm. in general women-led movies. Hey, our, our next one might be drama. Hey, it could I might be. Our next one might be it drama. Could be. Like, oh, I have an honorable mention. Go ahead, shoot. Debbie Oh, jeez. There was a lot of pounding going in on that film. So. I, I, I consider that action. <laughs> Mom, Dad, I've never seen that movie. I don't know what he's talking about. I just heard stories. A lot of stories. All right, so. Why would Debbie go to Dallas? I still don't know why you because would make a Dallas, movie of her. Dallas is a Fire great time. It's, Dallas is a great town to visit, by the way. It's a, not a town, first of all. Well, well the, one thing I did want to also ask, uh, in keeping with action-led movies, what do you, who do you think is the female action star? Right now? I, I'm just saying in general, who is a woman? Maybe they're not all the most successful films, but who do you think is the it, female? It, it used to be it used to be Angelina Jolie. Now it's Charlize Theron. That's what I was mm -hmm. about to say. That's what that, it used she, to be Jolie. It, now it's Theron. Yeah, mm -hmm. she really has proven herself to be. What was that movie that she did where it was in the uh, futuristic? I, I can't even remember. You're I'm, you're gonna post it. Mila Djovic and did Ultraviolet. No, no, but there was another one where. You'll look it up. I'll tell you later. Okay. Go post it on I'll here. I'll post it on there. Uh, that movie. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> that movie right this there. This one right there. <laughs> Eon Flux. There that's you, oh, that's right. She did do that one. Yes, I forgot. Yeah. Why is that not on my list? Eon yeah. Flux. Yeah. Honorable mention. You know, and no Google. No Google. No Google. <laughs> Eon Flux. All right. So uh, that's our top five women-led action films. Make sure you guys put your top five list in the comments below. We'd love to see what you guys have. Even if it's an, if it's an amalgamation of what we actually gave you guys for top if, five. If you or strongly disagree. That, 
with his number one. Hey, don't look. He over had, number two. He had Holy Man. In you had five. Batman in number five. You, you, <laughs> Yeah, we went there. Make sure, make sure you put your top five in the comments below, and uh, make sure you like so that way we know the videos that we're putting out for you are ones that you guys want to see. And subscribe so that way you are aware of all the other stuff that we do on the show. We do the Goods Podcast, we do You Don't Hate, we do Rule of Two, and there there's Star Wars news, and we also do Dropkick and the Beauty if you're a big wrestling fan. So four. Cherry sitting here. <laughs> yeah, you didn't announce me as our cherries. This uh, time. It's going to be in a graphic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Manny and Aspen back at home. Uh, I'm Terrence. I'm this Art. Is, this is Art. We'll Take do care. <laughs> We're going to do that again because I wasn't ready. That was not the way I was going to go with that. All right. He's still working on this. Because I don't normally do it. Manny leads the show. I just sit back and I just say shit. Yeah. Because that's where I'm comfortable with. All right. Okay. This is, this is a little thing called rehearsal. So we'll take care of that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. I don't rehearse. I don't prep. I don't do any no, of that shit. No, I'm just no, here. No, no, no. You have to say that. <laughs> no flash. No substance. No flash. No substance. <laughs>